Finally, Looker Studio has built Funnel Charts into its core product. I'm incredibly excited about this because up to this point we've had to do all kinds of workarounds. But as of last week, funnels are now native, a native chart inside of Looker Studio. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how this works because I believe you should know about it. And I'm going to show you how I would use funnel charts inside of my Looker Studio dashboards. Let's dive in. Hey and welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your web stats. Before we head over to the tutorial, I have created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So if you want to grow your website traffic, just head over to the video description for a download link there. All right, with that out of the way, let's move to the tutorial. All right, let me show you how the new funnel diagram in Looker Studio works. And I have a small sample dashboard here that I just put together for this training purpose. And I have two use cases that I use funnels a lot in. And the first one is e-commerce and the second one is lead generation. Within e-commerce, so in an online store, you have people that view a product. You have people that add that product to their cart. You have people that view their cart and go into the checkout and finish an order. That's a typical funnel in an e-commerce context. But then you also have lead generation where it's usually just a landing page, a form page and a thank you page. And very often you also want to know what are the percentages, how many users are dropping off at certain stages so you can optimize your website for that. So in this video, I'm going to cover both use cases with the new funnel chart in Looker Studio. And at the end of the video, I'm going to cover more advanced techniques. So let's start with the e-commerce use case. And as I already said, I have a small Looker Studio dashboard right here as an example. And in real life, my dashboards would be a little bit more elaborate. For this tutorial, it's fine. I have the total revenue here, the total amount of transactions over time, and then some a channel breakdown here, the items sold, and this would be a good place to put in a funnel. So let's try the new funnel diagram from Looker Studio. So I'm gonna edit my dashboard here. I'm gonna put in a chart. I'm just gonna scroll down until I see the section funnel. And there are three flavors, small differences. I'm just gonna put in the first one. So I'm selecting it and I'm dropping it in to the dashboard. And uh, if I view the dashboard and I zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm actually doing, you see that even though I have a funnel, it's not really what I want. I see the products here and these are the items that have been purchased. So it's basically just, it took the metrics and the dimensions, the, it took all the settings from my previous diagram here or my table here. So I'm gonna edit and we're gonna configure our funnel diagram so it's a little bit closer to what we actually want. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna choose a metric for this. And I want to uh, work with the metric active users. And the reason I pick active users is I want to know what amount of users are going through my funnel. So how many users are opening a product? How many users are adding a product to their cart? What's the amount of users that actually do a purchase? And what are the percentages in each stage? So active users is the metric here. And to view all the stages in my e-commerce funnel, I need to work with the event name. Because if somebody opens up a product or add something to the cart, that's tracked through events. So if I select event name and active users, this is what I get. So let me zoom in a little bit. So I get all the events that I have in my data set from page view to session start, first visit, and then some e-commerce events are here as well. So view promotion, view item list, view item, select item. Those are all e-commerce events. And the last step that I want to do here is I want to filter down this chart to only show me the events that I care about. And I like to keep these funnels a little bit more simple. So let's simplify this by adding a filter. I'm going to create a filter e-commerce funnel. And uh, I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to include by event name. And the first event name that I want to include is view item. So that means somebody opens up a product. I could even add view item list. Yeah, let's do that in this case. And then the next line that I want to include is event name equals to view item or include event name equals to add to cart. And I could go on like this. So event name 
equals to and then view card. The next stage is event name equals to begin check out there are a couple of stages in between here so you could uh, do for instance add shipping info or a add pay payment details but not every site has those you should just go into your data set and see what events are tracked on your end but for brevity i'm gonna skip those so i'm gonna go from begin checkout i'm gonna straight into purchase which is the final conversion event let's hit save and let's see what happens here so if i go into the view I see what happens. So at view item list, I have 100%. Then I have view item, add to cart, view cart. So in my e-commerce funnel, from the moment somebody opens up a view item list, these are the percentages. So 4% of all the people that have a item list open actually make a purchase. I could make even more changes. So let's um, add one more rule to this because I want to have the total amount of people also. So event name equals to page view. That means like everybody that is visiting my site will trigger a page view. So at the top of my funnel, I have my 100% like all users now. And from all those users, 1.77% does a purchase event. So we could make some changes here. So um, for instance, under style percentage, yes. Percentage of max or of previous. And I like this. So what's the percentage that goes to the next stage from the previous step? So here, view item list, 44% of the total users compared to the previous step. And here, 61%, and here, 25%. And that really helps defining like what's the step where there is the least amount of flow to the next stage. And in this case, it's this stage, add to cart. Something else that I like to do, I don't really like these colors, and um, I don't like to define colors for every step. So let's try to make it a single color. Yeah, there you go. So this is just aesthetics, but I um, like it anyway. So this is how you make an e-commerce funnel. It's way easier than all the other like workarounds that have been here. So previously there were community visualizations, people made like with arrows and then different mixed data sources. People went through all kinds of hassle to kind of do this. And now it's a native, chart inside of Looker Studio. So I'm really happy that it has become so easy. There's one more thing that I could do here, which is to make these label names a little bit more readable, but I'm gonna do that in the advanced section of this video to make it uh, a little bit more quick and snappy to watch for you on YouTube. So the second use case is lead generation and I have basically the same dashboard as in my previous chapter, but now it's not about revenue, but it's about the amount of leads and the amount of users. Again, a timeline, again, channel sources. I have my landing pages here, and this would be a good place to put in a funnel because I have a landing page, I have a form page, and I have a thank you page. And I want to know what are the percentages of like flow through to the next stage and uh, what are the percentages drop off. So I'm gonna edit my sheet here and I'm gonna add in a chart. Again, I'm just gonna add in this funnel chart right here. And again, if I press view to, so I can zoom in a little bit, it just takes over the settings of my last table right here. So right now I'm looking at the active users over the landing page, which is not really useful. We're gonna make some changes here. So I'm gonna press edit. And the, the metric active users is actually what I want. I want to see like how many users do I have across the stages in my funnel. But instead of landing page, I'm gonna choose page path. So page path, here it is. And uh, again, we have a lot of pages on my site, so I need to filter down this chart. So I only get the pages in my funnel. So I'm gonna say lead generation funnel, and I'm gonna include page path. And then my first page, the first page in my funnel is the homepage. So I say page path is equal to slash, which is in GA4, slash is your homepage usually. The next page path, that I want to include here is my contact form. So I say equal to contact. And the last path that I want to include equal to contact bedankt 
which means thank you in English. So it's the contact form and then thank you. And uh, if I hit save, I probably should make the date range a little bit wider because I don't have so many visitors on my site. Let's see what's, what's going wrong here. Oh, yeah, I already know what, what is going wrong. I should have included the slashes at the end of my pages. So here it is, contact, contact bedankt. I forgot to include these ones, but on my site, if I had to the contact form, there is a slash at the end of the URL. So I, I need to include those as well if I'm using equal to. So um, close and let's go back to the funnel. I reverted it into a table to see what the, the data was that I was working with. And right now I get the homepage, 55 users, 19 users on contact and uh, nine at the thank you page. And um, again, I'm going into style. I want the percentages compared to the previous step. And I want the color by the single color. So I don't need to pick like a hundred colors for my funnel. Again, one thing that I would want to change the labels here right now is slash slash contact and slash contact slash thank you. I might want to change the labels here, but I'm going to show you how to do that in the next section of this video. Can you see how easy it is to make an e-commerce funnel and a lead generation funnel? compared to what it was. I'm really enthusiastic about this chart and I will probably use it in every dashboard that I'm going to build from now on. All right, let me show you a couple of advanced techniques. And if I go into the e-commerce uh, dashboard right here, the first one that I want to show you here is if I edit this, you have the option of enabling cross-filtering within your dashboard. And you could do that on, for instance, this um, channel pie chart, but also on a timeline. You can enable cross-filtering. I think you can even do this on the item level. Let's see if this works with uh, my e-commerce data set. It really depends on how good the data really is. But uh, let's see what this does. So if I go into my dashboard now, and if I, I have my direct traffic and my organic search, but let's say I want to zoom in to my organic search. Because I enabled cross-filtering, I can just press in the chart and it will filter down the entire dashboard, including the rest of the charts to only the organic search. So this is the revenue only from organic search. This is the timeline only from organic search. And this is the funnel diagram only from organic search. So this is really a game changer, I think. Again, you could do this with other channels as well. For instance, direct traffic or a date within your timeline. So if I want to zoom on into this date, again, I have the funnel only and the revenue and the transactions only for this particular date and i could even reset let's see if this even works with items sold i'm not quite sure actually yeah it does it does work view item list see and i can reset go back to what it was without the filter enabled and the same goes with my lead generation dashboard i can enable cross filtering by selecting the um, charts and then enabling cross filtering within the dashboard here so um, cross filtering Let's see how this works. So on my side, organic search is also an important driver of traffic. And uh, people that are landing on my site from Google search have a high likelihood of converting in my funnel. At least that, that's what I'm uh, seeing here. Again, I can reset and then also filter down by a certain date. So for instance, October 21, right here. Cool. So that's my first tip, cross-filtering combined with a funnel analysis. The second one that I want to show you is a little bit more elaborate. I'm gonna reset this dashboard right here. E-commerce, lead generation, it applies to both of them. And what I want is I want to change the labels here. And uh, perhaps you have a better way, but um, what I like to do or what I'm used to doing is I use the Looker Studio function list a lot. I will include a link down in the description. In the Looker Studio documentation, you have an entire list of functions that you can use. And um, in this case, a case function would be very handy. So I'm just gonna copy this example. So I'm gonna copy the simple example here. And uh, I'm gonna go into my dashboard and I'm gonna edit my dashboard and I'm gonna edit my funnel. And then instead of the dimension event name, I'm gonna switch that and I'm gonna say I want to add a calculated field. And this is my e-commerce funnel. I'm gonna say case when event name equals and then page 
view then and that is all users because everyone that visits my site will trigger a page view and this i'm going to copy that single line because i want to do this for every event that i included in my filter so i hope i still remember but the first one that i see here in the background is a view item list and the readable name that i want to give it this is item or, or product list yeah that's it and view item would be the next one this is just a product page let's do this a couple of more times so i have a so this doesn't really matter but i always like to keep things organized so view item uh, then add to cart we translate that to, to um, add to cart view cart cart page begin checkout so we could say something like open checkout or start checkout and then purchase is a purchase let's see what happens so i'm going to apply so there you go let me zoom in a little bit so instead of the raw event names i now have like readable names this is just if i send out a dashboard to one of my clients i really like things to be a little bit more neat and organized and especially if they're not really used to working with these events names, I like to convert them to more readable alternatives. And especially if you're in, working in Dutch or German or French or whatever language, it's also an opportunity to convert the English names to like a local language. So this is how you would do that. The same goes for um, our lead generation example here. So if I open this up, instead of page path, I can make a calculated field here. And I'm gonna call that a lead gen funnel steps and again I'm going to copy the simple case example from the function list and um, the first let's just uh, write it out so page path equals and then slash then this is uh, home or um, you could call this uh, landing and then contact is uh, the form and the last step is the thank you page so let's hit apply let's see what happens let's zoom in instead of the urls we have nice readable labels which is of course a little bit nicer to look at for your clients and whoever is reading the uh, the dashboard all right that's it for today i hope this video was clear i hope it was helpful if you have any questions or if you want to suggest a video that i should do next please leave a comment down below i will always love hearing from all of you also if you want to support the channel hit the like button subscribe to the channel that really helps me I get these videos out to as many people as i can again thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye